Good morning, everyone. Hello. How is everybody today? I hope you're doing fantastic. It's Thursday. My name is Robin Weldy, and I am going to be showing you today how I get my best base face and give you some tips and tricks for how you can do the same thing. And a last minute bonus. I just blew my hair dry and I thought maybe somebody out there would like to know how I get my hair to look smooth and shiny because for reals, this is brushed through. This is what I'm, I'm dealing with, all these flyaway frizzies and it doesn't look very shiny and it's just, you know, it's got wave like dents here and there. It's just not uniform at all. So I'm gonna show you guys what I do and this won't work for everybody I know, but maybe some people. <laughs> Hi, Jimmy. So I just smooth my hair with my hands as much as I can. And I will get into the base face shortly. And then I put a ponytail holder in it and I just move my ponytail holder every so often so it doesn't leave marks. Sometimes I do forget and I do get marks. But then I just spritz it with water where the marks are and do the same kind of process again. And then because my hair is long, I actually use a few ponytail holders just to smooth it and I just keep moving these down as I, every so often. And then I'll place it up here and I'll place, sometimes I'll place two down here. It just, it just depends. Some days it wants to straighten out more day, more than others. And then I have this craziness happening. Um, my hairdresser gave me a lot of bangs this last time and I don't know what to do with, let's say the back half of them. <laughs> um, I just don't know what to do with this much of it really. And it's just clumpy and frizzy and fly away. So I just try to flatten it out as much as I can. And then I drop stuff. I like these clips, the single one. I have some other ones that I really like, but not for this purpose. These, these hold really good, but that's gonna definitely leave marks in my hair because my hair will kind of bump, bubble up underneath and I'll get definitely get a mark there this one it tends to not do it as much so it's just the single um, and so I put it this way and because I have so many different layers here and shorter bangs in front I have to use several clips and it's really pretty for a video <laughs> not really so sometimes I have to put a little guy here to hold those bangs and then I still have all these frizzing out down here so I use yet another and the same thing I just keep moving these puppies down um, <clears throat> hello welcome hi Kelly so it is not pretty right not pretty to do makeup videos but this is real life and if it helps me I thought maybe it'll help you and I ain't scared. I'll come on here looking like a fool. I don't care. If it helps you, I'm all for it. Okay. So I already put on my lotion and um, that has a SPF of 20 in it. And now I am going to put on my um, primer. Primer is really important. Not only is it going to help your um, foundation to stay put, it's also going to help minimize some fine lines. Let's not get carried away. It is not magic on a bottle. It's not gonna hide these, but it will hide some fine lines and pores. It will help fill in your pores. And so your foundation just glides over top. Pardon me. It doesn't like get down in your pores. Um, if you have an issue with bad pores, I have something for you. Message me below and I can tell you all about it. But I, I there was a product that I used and the next morning I was like, holy cow, my pores were like gone. And I didn't used to have issues with pores, not until like the last year. And then my pores were, 
all of a sudden they started getting huge and I was having pores where I never saw them before. And, um, oh yeah, it took care of them really, really good. Anyway, I'm going to put on this primer. And when you have a primer that comes out of a tube or something like this, you want to warm it up. Um, so I put about the size of a pea on my finger. And then I'm just going to take my top two fingers here, my first two fingers, and I'm just going to hold it there and warm it up a bit before I put it on my face. And it's already a very slickery product, but this is just going to help it glide even better um, and make it as viscous as it can. Viscous. Whoever thought when they were a little girl that they'd grow up and do makeup videos and be able to use the word viscous on them. So I am just putting this all over, but I got the thicker part of it. I touched my nose and my chin first because that's where my pores are the most prevalent. And then if you have any trouble with your makeup disappearing around your mouth, don't necessarily put it on your lips. Um... Unless you're going to wear like a matte all day lipstick kind of thing. But um, I also try to rub it just a little bit, whatever's left on my fingers, on my eyebrows. Um, I don't have a lot of eyebrows. They're kind of thin. I can see through them like into my skin. So this just helps. I, I brush them both ways to try to get that product down kind of on my skin so my um, eyebrow pencil is going to stay put or get between the hairs and go under my skin to fill in blank spots. That's my hope anyway. Okay. Another thing I love about this um, Touch Glorious Primer is that it doesn't ball up. Like you saw how long I was just rubbing that in and it never balled up underneath or it never balled up. It's same with my um, daily sunscreen moisturizer. It doesn't ball up under there either. So I absolutely love those products for that reason. Um, okay. So while that's just kind of setting up and drying, um, I already curled my eyelashes a little bit. Um, but I might do a little extra. And I am going to give you some tips for mature skin and um, getting your best foundation coverage and how to tackle any dry spots or issues that you might have um, where the makeup maybe just doesn't want to go on, you know, on a certain area of your skin or something like that. So it's time to move my rubber bands a little bit so they don't make marks and I move these down just a slight little bit too and then I keep moving that and I'm just smoothing my hair as I'm doing my makeup also if you have any leftover like primer face primer on your fingers it's awesome for flyaways or there's little straggly dry ends or there's little hairs that you get that just kind of float and they don't ever lay down you can just use whatever's left on your fingers for that too at least with this one. I don't know if they all do that, but this unique one does. Okay. So I think that foundation or the um, primer is probably set up. I'm shaking up my Touch Mineral Foundation. And whenever you use a mineral liquid foundation like this, you always want to shake it and you want to make sure whatever's in the dropper is out and then shake it again, because you want to make sure you're getting the freshest and bestest. Alrighty. And then I'm going to give myself a foundation box. Kind of like chicken pox, but not as contagious. 
unless you love my look. And then, then maybe it will be contagious. My final look. All right, this brush is my magic wand. And this is a unique brush. It is called the Powder Concealer Brush. It is life-changing. The bristles are so soft and they help um, really smooth out your foundation. And I think it's it feels quicker to me than using a beauty blender. But if you don't have it, then just use a beauty blender. And I will show you here in a second what to do with your beauty blender. So I just use this brush and I just make sure that right now that I'm just spreading that out. And once I'm happy with the fact that I think it's spread out, I'm going to just buff. So I'm just going to buff what I've put on. I, pr I went pretty darn light today. But I will do another coat only in my problem areas. Because let's face it, we all got them. The older we get, the more of those pesky problem spots with hyperpigmentation. I definitely have it. I don't know if you can see my hyperpigmentation here. Definitely here. These are old acne scars and hyperpigmentation. I even have some here and along the, my jawline here. I'm getting a little here and I definitely have some, some spots here. And that one there drives me nuts. And I have one right there. People say, your skin is flawless. And I'm like, it really is not. Trust me, it is not flawless. Whoops. Um, but anyway, if you're using a beauty blender like this, you wanna dip it in water, wring it out, you want it to still be damp, but you don't want it to be where any water is, that you can't wring any more water out. And then you just wanna put your foundation, you can either put it on the blender or on your face like I just did with foundation box. And then you wanna press and roll. And it will take a while, but you will get a beautiful uh, finish that way. And you just press and roll, press and roll until it's all blended out. Okay. So I am going to um, do another layer on my problem areas here. This foundation is um, considered a medium coverage, but it's the fullest coverage of anything I've ever used. Um, but it doesn't feel like it. It feels like nothing on your face. You really just don't even feel it. You don't feel like you're wearing a mask all day or anything like that. As a matter of fact, that's the first time I've said that in a long time because I completely forgot that foundation can even feel that way. Um, because I've been using this for about a year almost. Um, and I forgot that foundation can even feel like that. So I'm just going back and I'm just putting this on my problem spots. And I'm using the smaller part of my brush. And I like this since my eyesight isn't as good as it once was. I can get real close to my eye with it and see what I'm doing. Because when your hands are in your face and your field of vision is only this much, there's not a lot of room between your mirror and your face to do stuff. So that's where a brush like this really, really comes in handy. Not to mention, it gives the prettiest finish. So I'm just gonna make sure I got that all blended because I don't see as well as I once did. And I'm using the other end just to make sure I got that blended out, but I'm trying to avoid touching the um, the main spot there. Okay, I'm trying to leave it alone. And then here I have more, and right there. So again, I'm gonna use a smaller end and I'm just dabbing that. 
and then I'm just kind of spreading it out and then I'll kind of go in a circle around that spot and then I have veins too that up here so I just put a little extra on the veins so I'm doing the same down here And I'm gonna look, which it's hard to see these ones on the side here for me. And then these lovely spots over here. I realized that um, when I brush my teeth, I always put my mouth this way on the faucet and this side of my mouth gets wet. And I think over time, it's just maybe I mean, I don't know if this is true. I think it doing that every single day after I put on my sunscreen, it, it washes off the sunscreen right there. And that's where I happen to have spots, but maybe I, it's not the case. I don't know, but it would make sense. Okay, so now I have my um, foundation on. And later on, I will I may do some more touch up with um, concealer. I'll just have to see how it goes. Okay, I don't necessarily consider contouring part of a base face, but I am gonna do some contouring anyway. I'm using Beachfront Bronzer. Um, we also have a um, contouring trio on sale right now. Um, if if supplies are still available I don't know I haven't checked it lately um, it was supposed to only be on sale until the 31st but there were items still discounted when I went on there but I didn't check the bronzer or the yeah the bronzer the contour so what I'm doing now is I have like kind of jowls here. I have a longer chin. So I'm just darkening those up because things that are darker recede. And so it can give the illusion that it doesn't exist. <laughs> so I'm just doing that on my little jowl marks here. But I'm avoiding this area where it, where it rises up because I don't want that to look more risen up because I'm already getting kind of a marionette kind of lines here. So I'm just trying to even this off a little bit <clears throat> or give the illusion that it is. And then the same thing with my forehead. My forehead is pretty tall. And once I blend all this out, it won't look so crazy, but I am just giving the illusion that my forehead ends maybe right there. Oh, I need to do my nose too. My nose is already slender, but it's crooked. It goes to this side. Um, you can see when I turn my head this way, it kind of looks normal. But when I turn my head this way, this side is sloped and it's way longer on this side. It is not pretty. Um, but I will contour it so it appears to be more straight than it is. It's really noticeable in pictures. If I don't, if you know, if you look at my photos, almost all of them are from the side, like a quarter picture. Rarely are they straight on and never are they from this side. <laughs> Um, so most people don't notice, I guess, that my nose is so crooked. At least I hope they don't. And so this is just, when I contour on the sides here, I'm just giving the illusion that my cheekbones are higher because the wider part is what's going to look like it's standing out more. And this part will kind of recede more. It's kind of also my natural cheekbones right there but again I will blend this out and it won't look quite as crazy 
I have a sleeping puppy over there. He just grumbled. He doesn't like the noise. Okay, time to redo the ponytail. Whoops. Hold on. We're always dropping stuff. Ugh. Always dropping something on these videos. Okay. So my hair's looking a little straighter and a little shinier already. I mean, some days is better than others, but I just keep running my fingers through it. I have a lot of natural wave on this side of my head and right here. And then this side is pretty darn straight. Um, so I'm gonna put the ponytail up a little bit higher this time. Just trying to not get lines in it. And then I'm just, still just smoothing it, smoothing it, smoothing it. Sometimes I'll even take sections and just smooth it. Um, I use Aveeno lotion and sometimes I'll get a little bit of lotion on my hands. Not enough that it would actually leave a spot or be visible. But just like after it's all, you know, um, rubbed in, then I'll do it. And I think it just helps a little bit, especially if the ends are looking frizzy. And then I'm going to do my couple of rubber bands again, just to kind of help smooth it out again. <laughs> and then I got to reposition these two. See, that's already getting straighter and looking better. It's not zinging out and flying away like it was. But I still have so much. Look how far back these bangs are. I, I just don't even know what to do with that. It's crazy. All right, first world problems. Okay. And then I gotta do one here because I have shorter little hairs that fall down. All right. Ta-da! Beautiful, isn't it? Okay. So, um, let's do some eyebrows, which aren't really part of a base face, or are they? Eyebrows really frame your face and kind of finish things off. So, I've gotten to the point where my eyebrows, like I said, are thinning. Oh, I need to order some more eyebrow pencil. That's all I got. That's all that's left. I love this stuff, you guys. Ah, I better order that like right now. Um, but because my eyebrows are so sparse and thin and balding, I brush them straight up in hopes that I actually make contact with my skin to look like they're not thin and balding. I changed, I tried to go off some medication and uh, for anxiety and I started balding so badly, like really badly. And they say when you bald through here, it's hormonal. Um, plus of course I'm almost 50. So I hope the hair comes back and that this is not my new you know, thin hair, but if it is, I will learn to live with it. So this eyebrow in the front and um, right here is lower than this one. So I have to build it up a lot on the top. These eyebrow pencils are amazing. I really like them. 
I was on a quest for a good eyebrow pencil before I found these and I was struggling. Excuse me. I like the Wet n Wild one, which is a lot cheaper, but it just doesn't stay put. Um, this one, it stays put and you can get a really light touch or a really heavy touch on it. <clears throat> this eyebrow also is over. See, this one lines up with the corner of my nose. This one is more in, so I have to fake it and jowl it in a little bit more in the front. Just to make them even. They don't need to be absolutely identical. Most people's eyebrows are not identical, so you just do what you can. It adds character. Okay. I can f get micro focused on things. So at some point I, always, I just have to say it's good enough. <laughs> like leave it alone, <laughs> it's good enough. Or else I'd leave looking like a cookie monster. But as much as I brush them in, I'll see a picture later. Um, you know, people I'm always doing selfies and whatever. And my eyebrows look so thin and I'm like, are you kidding me? Like I drew them on if they felt like they, I drew them in so much. Um, and then they look thin in a picture, and I'm like, that's not what I was going for. Okay. Um, let's see. I will go ahead and do my concealer, because because I'm doing base face today, I'm not going to do an eye look, a full eye look. Um, I will probably finish off with some eyelashes, um, some mascara, but that's, that's where I'm going to stop today. Um, so this is all about the face. You know I'm all about the face, about the face, no drama. I'm all about the face, about the face. Okay, I probably even got too much um, of this concealer on here. And again, like I said with the um, primer, whenever anything comes out of a tube like this, you want to warm it up on your fingers first before you apply it to your face. And make sure it's very liquid. And then I'm just gonna dab that on. And then I put a little bit down my nose, but because my nose is long, I don't go all the way down because I'm not trying to highlight like my whole nose. Um, I'm just trying to thin the top part where I've got, where it's a little bit wider. And then I just do whatever's left on my fingers, I put on those problem spots that we already put the foundation on. And then I'm going to get my magic wand again and my strong mirror and just make sure I like to get this up as close as I can to my bottom eyelashes. And make sure it's all blended out. And then here is a big old tip. If your um, under eye area is like mine, it can be very crepey. And if I were to pinch my skin, it would just stay pinched. Um, so I would just wet this in a thing of water and I squeezed it out. And now I'm just gonna roll this. Press and roll under my eyes. Wherever you have wrinkles or crepiness or dryness or those spots where your makeup just doesn't want to go on, this is a really good tip to just press that moisture in. You don't want it so wet that it's going to re-wet, re-liquify your makeup. You just want to think of it as just pressing a little bit of moisture back into it. And so I have some deeper crevices on this side of my mouth. So I just press that in. And then right here, I have wrinkles that crisscross 
I have some that go this way and some that go this way. And um, so I just spend a little extra time right there. And then on crow's feet, but they're smile lines, right? Okay. And then it might seem counterintuitive, but I'm gonna set that with setting powder now. And our setting powder is pretty darn cool because there's this mesh thing in there so that if you travel and you have this in your bag, it's not all just gonna dump out. You may, that's all that came out um, because it was already sitting on top. But I think it's just so ingenious that they have that mesh. If you like to bake your makeup, you can pop this off and take that mesh out. Um, if you don't know what baking makeup is, don't worry about it. <laughs> now baking is where you put on a gob of powder, like under your eyes or all over your face or wherever you have wrinkles and you just let it sit. And then before you're done, maybe 20 minutes, 10 minutes later, you brush it off. And it actually kind of melts into your skin while it's sitting there and it um, gives a really pretty finish, really pretty look. But this um, powder has light reflecting pigments in it and it just really helps to like photo finish your 